Hello everyone, Clayton here at eTrailer.com. Here at eTrailer.com, we install, test, and review tons of different products to help you as a customer make a more educated decision. Today we'll be taking a look at, and I'll show you how to install, the Dexter Trailer Axle Beam for 7,000 pound weight capacity that's 95 inches long on our dump trailer. Keep in mind our axle just comes with the easy loop spindles, so we definitely do need to add a hub assembly. And you can find one of those here at eTrailer.com. Our axle is going to be that key connection point between our wheels and our trailer. Now this axle is really strong, like I said it's rated for 7,000 pounds. And one nice feature that I really like about this axle is it actually has a little bit of bow in it. That way when we load our trailer, the wheels won't be cambered in. Our axle does mount to the top of our leaf spring. And what can happen over time is if we overload our trailer, our trailer is going to sag and hit that axle, creating cracks and dents in the top of that axle, causing our tires to wear unevenly. Our lug pattern is going to be 8 on 6.5. One really nice feature about our axle is that it has this nice easy lube zerk fitting on the outside of our spindle. Our axle beam is going to be constructed out of a high durability steel, so it's going to hold up really nice over time. It has a nice black paint finish on it, so it's going to look nice under our trailer. And in terms of installation, getting our axle installed onto our trailer really isn't that bad. It's just kind of heavy, bulky, and awkward to move around. But if you take your time, you can definitely do it at home. With that being said, I'll go ahead and show you how we got ours installed. To start our installation, we're going to want to take our wheels off. We can now move over to our other side. With all of our lug nuts removed, we can now take off our last tire. We'll just set this off to the side. We now want to remove the hardware on the bottom of our U-bolts. We're going to spray it down with penetrating oil. I suggest doing this the night before and letting it soak in. That'll just make getting the rusty hardware off a whole lot easier. And in this case, we're going to be taking off our leaf springs, so I'm going to soak all that hardware as well. So we're getting our hardware off of these U-bolts, and you're going to want to do this for each side on any axle you're replacing. Now at this point, you'd want to save your U-bolt and bottom plate, but in our case, we're getting new ones, so our old ones will not be reinstalled. I had previously said we were going to remove our leaf springs and just drop our axles down. We're actually just going to take off our old hub assembly. It's going to be a lot easier to work with and a little bit cleaner. So we're going to take our old assembly off, grab ourselves a pipe wrench. Just want to pry against our um, cover here. Just like that. I do suggest having some extra paper towels or just dirty towels laying around. Just rub that grease out of there. Make it a little bit easier to work with. And remove our retaining pin. I usually try not to bend these just in case we ever have a failure or something going down the road we can save our extra parts. Set this off to the side and wipe this down. Again, you don't have to do this, but it makes it a little bit easier to work with and it's a little cleaner. Can now grab our inch and a half wrench, hold our lugs, just break that loose. Usually those are just past hand tight, so you might be able to get it with your hands, but it's a little bit easier with that wrench. So we can set that off to the side. We'll now grab a rubber mallet and just kind of Hit our brake assembly just to loosen everything up. We now want to carefully pull out our hub assembly. I like to grab a paper towel to catch our bearing. Just like that. And set that off to the side. And then lift off our assembly. I'll wipe down our spindle here. 
and grab some brake parts cleaner and just spray everything down. And you don't have to do this, but it makes it a little bit easier to work with. And I'm also going to grab some penetrating oil and just hit these bolts here to help break them loose. Looks like we already lost one nut here, so we'll grab our 916 socket and just remove our backing point nuts. We can now go ahead and cut our brake line wiring. You just want to cut it as close to our factory brakes as possible. And then now would be a good time to cut your brakes on your full axle as well. With that wiring cut, you can lift off our brake assembly. Every axle is going to be a little bit different that comes off your trailer. In this case, ours has zip ties with wiring running down it. So I'm just going to go and cut these zip ties working down our axle. And then you'll want to repeat the same process of moving our brake assembly over on the other side. We lift off our last hub, hub assembly and set it off to the side. Now with an extra set of hands, we're going to lift up on our axle. Kind of go, might have to maneuver it just to get it out of your leaf springs. I do suggest doing this with an extra set of hands, but if you are close to the ground, you might be able to pull it off by yourself. With our old axles out, it's pretty clear that these are pretty damaged. As you can see, there's a big crack right here. It's indented here. Actually, both axles have dents on both sides. And we'll, show you, we'll go ahead and show you our tires, but this is the result of our axles being cracked and dented. If you look right here, this is the tire that came off this side. It's pretty clear it's not worn evenly, so it's time to change our axles. Remember we had to cut this wire off of our old axle. The result of this was our wire being pulled out of our old axle tube. So I'm actually gonna delete this whole wire here and we'll make this connection to our new axle. Our new axle has that wire that goes all the way through to the other side. For any of our wiring, we wanna make sure we're using heat shrink butt connectors. If you don't have any, you can pick some up here at eTrailer.com. We're also going to need to clean up our wiring for our front axle. As you can see, we have four wires coming out. All we need is two. So I'll go ahead and clean this up just like I did in the rear. I'm going to extend these a little bit as well just to have some extra. We can always come back and cut off extra wiring before we make our connection to the axle. It's important to make sure you're using a similar gauge wire that's coming from our trailer. And go ahead and heat shrink these down. We are now ready to get our axle in the correct orientation that it's gonna be on our trailer. There are gonna be a couple ways that we know it's in the right direction. Our first show tell sign is gonna be our sticker facing the rear. As you can see, our sticker right here is facing the rear. And our next way to tell is gonna be our brake wiring. Our driver side is gonna have these two exposed wires. So we're gonna know that this goes on the driver side that's where we have those wires that we just fixed on our driver's side. And if you look here on the passenger side, you'll see that there's no extra wires hanging off. If the axle you ordered didn't come with a hub, you're, go, you're good to go ahead and slide it in and then add our hub assemblies. But if your axle did come with a hub, now would be the time we want to take it off. We're going to take our new hub off the same way we did the old one, just on one side, and we'll come around the side of our trailer and slide our axle through. With an extra set of hands, we can now slide our axle over our leaf spring and kind of maneuver it into place. You do want to watch that lighter side and make sure it's not going to tilt up on us. Having this extra set of hands is really going to help us just guide this into place safely. This one get it close and let go and make sure it's not going to tilt up. In this case, we're good. So we'll try to drop our lower brackets into this notch on our leaf spring. With our axle in place, we want to reinstall our hub assembly in the reverse order that we took it apart. When we're tightening this up, we just want to do it a little past hand tight. That'll just compress everything down. 
Get right about there. Maybe a little bit more. Just like that. Spin our hub. Everything's good. We can now grab our retaining clip and snap this back on. With a little bit of grease added in our cap, we'll go ahead and put this back in. We do want to get this as straight as possible. I suggest just grabbing a flat blade screwdriver, kind of tapping along that outside lip, carefully knocking it back into place. We'll inspect our lip. In this case, we're good. We'll go ahead and repeat the same process for our other axle. We now want to reconnect our wiring from the hub that we took off to our axle. And it doesn't matter which orientation these go. We just want to put these two together and these two together. Again, you can do this as long as brown goes to black. When we're doing this, we want to make sure we're using heat shrink butt connectors. Again, if you don't have those, you can find those here at eTrailer.com. Repeat that same process for other wire. Give them a little tug and make sure they're secure. Now we'll come back and heat shrink these down. Since these two wires are going to be open ended on this side, we want to make sure to put electrical tape around both ends and we'll tape them together. That way it's nice and secure. We now want to take the plastic covers off of the wires from our brake hub on our driver's side. I am going to strip this back or cut this end off and restrip it because they did get some paint on the wire. You don't have to do this, but that's just going to help ensure that we're getting a good connection. Once I strip these back, I'm going to make our connections to this wire or these wires. And again, it doesn't matter which orientation you do. You want to make sure you have quite a bit of extra wire. That way it doesn't get stressed when our axle moves. And I do suggest picking up some wire loom to help protect our wiring once we're done. I'm going to repeat that same process for this wire. Now come back and heat shrink these down. We're going to add some wire loom right here just to protect these wires. As you can see, we have plenty of extra wire for when our axle moves. With all of our wiring cleaned up, we'll repeat that same process on our other axle. With our wiring completed, we can now go ahead and install our plates and our U-bolts. In this case, we're going to have new ones. If you don't have new ones, you'll be using your old ones, but you can find new ones here at eTrailer.com. We just want to have our U-bolts over our trailer axle. And again, you do, you do want to make sure that you don't have any wires pinched under the U-bolt closest to the hub. With that slid in, we can now grab our plate. We want to install our plate with this flange facing down. We're simply going to slide this up against our U-bolt and kind of pinch it together and slide it up. I do suggest grabbing your hardware and getting a couple threads started. Then we'll move up to the front. Same thing, kind of pinch it together. If you're having trouble, you can always push up like so, holding the top of the U-bolt. We can now add our other two nuts. Now we'll come back with a 23 millimeter socket and tighten these down evenly across both U-bolts. You do want to make sure that this hole in our plate lines up with the hole in our leaf spring. We now want to reinstall our wheels and tires. With our wheel reinstalled, we want to add our new lug nuts with the cone facing the wheel. With our lug nuts tightened down, we'll go ahead and put our other wheels on get our trailer on the ground, and then come back and torque everything down. We want to make sure to go in a crisscross pattern. With our lug nuts torqued down, we'll repeat that same process for the rest of our wheels. 
That's going to do it for our look at the Dexter axle beam with the Easy Lube Spindles.